You got him, Billy? Yeah. You're in him. You're chaining. You're no. chaining, Billy. Go after that, you devil. Come on. Here he comes. That's it. He's got it. Hog, hog. All fly fishermen know the thrill of a hot fish hitting the fly, clearing the water, and taking off. It really gets your adrenaline surging. And when that fish is a tarpon, you can feel why it's called the Silver King, the most exciting of all fly rod game fish. In this second tape of his mastery series, Billy Pate, a man who set over 15 fly fishing world records, will show you how to refine and add to the strategies and techniques you learned in his first program, fly rodding for tarpon. You'll need them all and more when you face the challenge of giant tarpon. Hello. Welcome to my second tape on fly riding for tarpon. There isn't anywhere on earth I'd rather be than on the Gulf going after giant tarpon. If you're ready for some more excitement, I'm ready to show you what I've learned in hooking over 4,000 tarpon. In this tape, you'll learn things that I've spent a lifetime learning. And with luck, you'll see me hook up and land that elusive 200-pound giant tarpon that is the dream of every tarpon angler. I'll define the key principles that make giant tarpon the supreme test for the fly fisherman. You'll learn what these principles mean and how they must influence everything you do when you go after giants. I'll show you where to find the giants and how to hunt for them. You'll learn how to spot the largest fish in the school and the factors you must consider when casting to that fish. I'll show you how to set the hook and then be prepared for the fight of your life. I'll teach you the techniques I used to fight these powerful fish to the boat. Perhaps one day, it could be you that lands a new world record. If you haven't seen my first tape, Fly Riding for Tarpon, I urge you to study it. Everything you do when you go after giant tarpon will build on the concepts presented in my first tape. Now, what do I mean by giant tarpon? When I use the word giant, I'm referring to tarpon over 120 pounds. To give you an idea of its size, a 120 pound tarpon would be over six feet long and have a girth of around 36 inches. That fish would be taller than I am and bigger around than my waist. The tarpon I caught in 1982 for a world record on 16 pound test tippet weighed 188 pounds. It was a monster, almost seven feet long with a 43 inch girth. When you compare giant tarpon with their smaller relatives in the Keys, you'll find that there are two primary differences that influence every action you take. First, giants are obviously larger and stronger, and second, they're less predictable. Like Key's tarpon, the giants will readily take a fly when it's presented properly. If you thought Key's tarpon were tough fighters, wait till you hook a giant. Their fighting ability is awesome. That's one of the things that makes them such a fantastic fishing experience. When you fight a fish this large and powerful, using the strict tackle limitations set by the International Game Fish Association for record catches, your success is determined by a variety of different elements, including luck.
Everything must go right. Any one of many small details can mean the difference between success and failure. In fact, most of the time, you will lose. But when you win, it could be the fish of a lifetime. The reason that locating giant tarpon is less predictable than locating smaller tarpon is simply because there are fewer of them. You can find giant tarpon throughout the middle latitudes of the Atlantic. There are even some in the Keys. But they're so spread out there that finding them is a matter of luck. The only large, shallow water concentrations in the United States are along the Gulf side of mainland Florida. The prime time to fish for giants in the Gulf is during their annual migration, which reaches its peak during the months of May and June. But exactly when is less predictable than it is with Keys tarpon. That's because there's no way of knowing precisely when the fish will begin to arrive or how long they'll stay. To make it even tougher, there are no bars or islands to channel their movements like in the Keys, so they can come at you from any direction. Giant tarpon are larger and more powerful. They're harder to locate than Keys fish, and they swim about 50% faster. So what does this mean to you? You'll need more advanced fishing skills, mental determination, a well-planned strategy, and an extraordinary physical effort to be successful. It takes great endurance just to stand in the ready position on the open water for the entire day. You must always be alert for every opportunity. And it's very hard on the eyes. You see fish better by constantly scanning the water. So don't stare at one spot. You must keep your eyes moving all day long. Your arm must be in shape for long, quick casts into the wind, and you must be deadly accurate. You've got to be in top fighting condition. They are giants, and they fight long and hard. A mean 150-pounder can take over three hours to land and you have to be able to outlast them to win. You must be mentally tough, too. Just being strong isn't enough. Your will to win has to be greater than the tarpon's, and the tarpon thinks he's going to die. You need total concentration, because you're constantly moving and not staked out. There are more decisions to make, and you have to make them faster. These tarpon move so fast that if you're not ready all the time, you could miss the only opportunity you'll get all day. The pressure really builds on you. You need to keep that hammer cocked and be ready to act without hesitation. If giant tarpon are so mentally and physically exhausting to catch, why go after them? Well, in other types of fishing, it's not every day that your next cast has even the remotest chance of hooking a world record. But this does happen when you go after giant tarpon. Oh my God, look at the fish. Yes, at, no look way. at the fish at 11 o'clock, Billy. Well, that's a big fish here. Look at that movement. Look at, look at that movement. God almighty. Look at this. That's a world record there. Yeah, right here, Billy, coming at us. Yeah, I see him. It's a unique opportunity for the fly fisherman. You can actually see world record fish swim by in almost every school that passes your boat. And you get to cast to them. The feeling is overwhelming, and the strikes can be spectacular. It's so much more exciting than any type of fishing you'll ever do. Every time you hook up and that huge fish clears the water, you'll think this could be it. This could be the world record. I'm not talking about a four pound record for bluegill. I mean, we're talking about the largest tarpon ever caught on a fly. And that's a 200 pound fish. Now you know why I've been hunting giant tarpon for 24 years. It takes more than skill, strength, and determination. You must also have a well thought out strategy. The way you combine physical and mental toughness with a well thought out strategy is what the rest of this tape is all about. When you go after giant tarpon, 
An expert guide is even more critical than in the Keys. He has to know the Gulf and have had experience hunting and landing giant tarpon. To get to the tarpon flats, you'll have to run for several miles in water that's claimed a lot of boats. Your guide's knowledge of the tides and locations of the rocks is crucial. And then, when you hook up a giant, your chances for success will depend greatly on your guide's experience and ability. Giant tarpon guides are a special breed, and Lee Baker is one of the best. He's helped Billy find and land lots of big tarpon over the past 10 years. He'll be working with Billy on this hunt for the elusive 200-pounder. Billy's objective is a world record. He spends four or five weeks each year fishing for giants, and he's modified his boat to give him some advantages. He added a raised casting platform. The extra height gives him great visibility, allows him to make better presentations, and lets the line fall on the deck away from his feet. Where most tarpon boats have two electric motors, Billy's boat has four. They give him extra speed when chasing a school or pursuing a hooked fish. Billy takes out four rods, all rigged and ready to go. He's chosen his reels for reliability and their smooth, powerful drags. For lines, Billy uses an Ultra 2 tarpon taper floater wet cell intermediate, an intermediate wet tip, and a monocore slime line. They're all weight forward size 12 lines that will get the fly to the fish under a variety of conditions he'll face on the flats. His favorite line for most conditions is a wet cell intermediate because tarpon usually take a foot or two under the surface. There's a good chance for a record fish here so it's imperative that my leader be tied properly. In my first tape, I showed you how to tie a leader using IGFA specifications. I used the same leader for giant tarpon with a couple of extra considerations. First, I test each spool of the class tippet material to make sure my class tippet needs no more than a 17.6 pound pull to break it. Second, I measure the tippets carefully. The 100-pound test shot tippet can be no longer than 12 inches, including the notch. And the 16-pound class tippet must be at least 15 inches long, not counting the notch. Since the schools run bigger here, I've lengthened my leader to 15 feet. That will keep my fly line from going over the backs of other fish as I try for the largest one. My favorite fly for giants is a cockroach because here in the Gulf, we have calm, clear water conditions. And a dull fly reflects less light in the air and spooks fewer fish than a brighter pattern. The head is orange, so I can keep track of it in the water. I keep several tied up on 3-0 hooks, sharp and ready for action. To succeed with giant tarpon, everything must go right. And you've all heard of a guy named Murphy who said that if anything can go wrong, it will. So I carry backups of everything. In my first tape, you saw that when you fly fish for tarpon in the Keys, you spend much of your time staked out on known routes, waiting for the tarpon to pass by your position. You know where the fish are going to be coming from, sometimes within a few feet. So the wind, tide, and sun direction remain fairly constant. In the Gulf, everything moves faster. You never know where the fish will be or what direction they'll be coming from. So you're always on the move, searching. Because you're moving, the effects of the wind, the tide, and the sun's angle are constantly changing. Here, it's all in motion. Each time you cast, your timing and how far you lead them is different. The fish can come from any direction, and they move faster than Keys tarpon. It's usually not possible to stop the boat by staking out with a pole because the bottom is so hard. So the boat is moving when you cast and when you retrieve. At times, the boat will be moving towards the fish, and you'll have to strip like crazy. 
When the boat moves away from the fish, you might barely retrieve it off. And then there'll be times when a normal retrieve is what you'll need. It's all unpredictable, and it all happens so fast. All your skills must be perfected instinctive. It's harder on your guide, too. He's always on the move, holding all day long in deep water, constantly repositioning the boat to offset the drift of the wind. He'll always work hard, but he'll work harder for someone who is capable of taking advantage of every opportunity. The best way to prepare for the challenge of giant tarpon is to actively fish a smaller keys tarpon. Consider it a prerequisite. Smaller tarpon are more plentiful, more predictable, and easier to land. You can learn a lot from these smaller fish. It will help you perfect your casting and fighting skills, skills that can become the margin between success and failure. You must pay your dues by fishing the keys before you even consider going for giant tarpon. Things you think about in the Keys must be second nature during the fast action on the Gulf. Billy, fish, 11 o'clock, coming in. Got him. Look at the cow in the lead. Mm -mm. He ate. Missed God it. Almighty. No, look, not it. How's that for action? <laughs> Two of them made it. Come right at the boat. Yeah, I got him. There's one, there's one behind it. Right in front of the boat. Don't jump again. Broke. Broke me off. I can't emphasize this enough. You must be completely prepared. Never underestimate your quarry or overestimate your own skill. This game is weighted heavily in favor of the fish. Any error could cost you a trophy. The way you win this game is by doing everything right. You'll probably hook several fish before you finally land one. So don't be disappointed if you lose a few. Everybody does. But with experience, it's only a matter of time before you land the giant. To find tarpon, you need to know what clues to look for, the signs of tarpon in the water. You're looking for any movement on the water that is out of the ordinary, such as nervous water, a pusher awake, a tail or a dorsal fin or the splash of a tarpon rolling. You should also carry a good pair of binoculars to search for tarpon and to watch other boats to see if they're chasing fish or casting to them. When you spot another boat working fish, watch them carefully. The fish they're working may spook. Then they'll move a safe distance away and regroup. If the boat that has been working them doesn't follow, then your guide can take advantage of the situation and intercept those fish when they've settled down. In fact, tarpon are known to bounce off one boat and move right to another. So pay attention to what other boats are doing and be ready for action. If you're new to fishing for giant tarpon, they'll all look huge. I'm always trying for a record, so when I spot a school, I try to pick out the biggest one. Since every school out here could have a 200 pounder in it, you might want to aim for the biggest one too. It's well worth the effort. When you go for a particular fish, the advantage of casting to a school is gone. Now, you're not only working for a cast into the strike zone of a specific fish, You've also got to keep the fly away from other smaller fish. That calls for extremely accurate casting, much more accurate than you needed in the Keys. The best time to try to pick out a monster is between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. when the sun is high, reducing the surface glare. 
Early in the morning or late in the day, you'll just have to cast it to school and hope that a big one eats. In school strings of pods, look for the lead fish. It's often the biggest. The highest probability for getting the biggest tarpon is in a daisy chain. Because the fish are circling instead of moving by, you have more time to spot the biggest fish. The largest fish in a daisy chain is usually a big female. She can be at the lead as the chain begins to form. But once the chain is going, she could be anywhere in the group, but she could move into the center of the chain. That could make for a risky cast over the backs of other fish. When fish are chaining clockwise, aim your cast to the right edge of the chain, or three o'clock. Then you'll get a head-on take and you won't have to cast over anybody's back. When they're moving counterclockwise, cast to the left edge, or nine o'clock, for a head-on take. If you cast to the nearest part of the chain, the fish have to turn 90 degrees to take your fly, which they don't like to do. And if your cast is too long, you may cast over somebody's back and spook the chain. Some chains are not stationary. They have a cartwheeling motion. Hitting the intercept point of the fish you want in a chain of this type is no easy thing. A daisy chain is one of the few situations where you actually have time to plan your cast. So make good use of it. Each of these situations requires perfect timing and very accurate casting. But even though your casting is second nature, you must concentrate on the fish in front of you and decide what to do next. You can only concentrate on so many things at once, and that's when your guide can help you. He probably sees at least twice what you see, so don't be afraid to ask for his help. He will direct your cast, and he'll tell you when and how fast to retrieve. If you don't listen and do what your guide tells you, you'll probably hear a lot about what you did wrong later. I'm swinging around, Billy. Okay, okay just hold it if you can. I'm holding and swinging. God, he's all in him. More fish beyond him, Billy. Yeah, so on. Big fish right there. That one's that. Oh, he was after pretty stuff. Eat it, somebody. Flies right on top. He's man. dogging it. He's, He's dogging it. it. A rat. A rat. Mm. Somebody finally ate. I'd hit him before I knew he was a rat, but I didn't hit him again. When you're going for big fish, don't waste your time and energy fighting small tarpon, or rats as I call them. Those mean teenagers of 90 to 100 pounds can be plenty tough, and they can sap your strength that you'll need later if you jump the big one that you want. When a fish takes the fly, it's difficult to judge its size in the water. You have to wait for a jump. So what do you do if he is a rat? Break him off. Make sure you have another rig lined up and ready to go. Before we get into another fish, let me show you the major principles that you'll need to know to hook up and land a giant tarpon. Once you have the fish spotted, your guide will try to position the boat to give you a head-on shot. By now, your casting is second nature, but knowing exactly when to cast and how to retrieve takes experience. Until you get that experience, rely on your guide. Wait for him to tell you when the boat's in the best position for your cast and when to start your retrieve. Just like you do in the Keys, always start your retrieve slowly. But here, the giants move faster, and generally faster fish like a faster retrieve. So I strip about 50% faster than I do in the Keys. 
strike when you feel the fish, not when you see it take. Otherwise, you could pull the fly right out of the tarpon's mouth. Now, hit it hard and fast. Next, forget the fish and clear the line to the reef. When the line is on the reel, hit him again twice as many times as you do for an average size tarpon to make sure that the hook is firmly set. Hook setting drag is still three to four pounds, like with average tarpon. Bow if the fish jumps. Your reaction time must be quicker with giant tarpon. There's no margin for error. He's so strong that if you're not fast enough when he bolts, he's gone. With experience, you'll learn to anticipate. Whenever the fish jumps, bow from the waist and push the rod forward to release the line tension. I consciously back up until I'm against the tower in my boat whenever I can. That way I can take a couple of steps forward to give line to a jumping fish. Don't try to pressure a giant tarpon too soon. He's just too strong. He'll break you off if you try to put too much heat on him. Instead, I use strategy. I actually go lighter in the beginning and let him wear himself down running against the drag and jumping. After his first runs and jumps are over, the job is to get him on the fly line. As the fish starts to tire, he'll settle into a slow, steady fighting pace to conserve his strength. Your strategy now is to break up his pace so that he can't rest. Force him to use up energy faster than you do. By pacing yourself, using different groups of muscles to keep the pressure on constantly, you can serve your strength while he burns up his. That can shorten the fight by hours. But always be ready and anticipate those sudden jumps. Now you can tighten your drag to about five pounds, one third of the breaking strength of your tippet. You can also add a couple more pounds of drag by bending the rod and palming the reel. Try to keep the total pressure at about eight pounds. Then he won't break you off as long as he stays in the water. Now's the time to go to work and wear him down. To do that, you must keep him working constantly against the drag of your reel. You're also trying to break his will to win by changing your fighting pattern to confuse him. You do that by constantly changing the direction of the pressure and using special techniques like the down and dirty to disorient him. The sooner you break his fighting spirit, the faster you can beat him physically. When I get the fish close to the boat, I try not to get over anxious and put any extra pressure on him. I leave the drag alone and don't palm the reel. There's less margin for error in close, so I don't try to rush it. I wait until he's on his side before pulling him up for the lip gap. This is a very dangerous moment. The gap is razor sharp. The fish can jump in the boat. You can throw the gap or pull the guide into the water. I try to anticipate the time for gapping and release the drag as the guide gaps the fish. That way, if the fish slips off the gap and runs under the boat, you won't break him off. All right, I've shown you the strategy for beating a tarpon, but every giant is a whole new book. I once fought a tarpon for 12 hours and I lost him. And yet one of my record fish took only 19 minutes to land. So come along with Lee and me while we go out to catch a few, and I'll show you what I mean. I don't want to go over anybody's back. I can't get a good shot. One just laying there. Come on, eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Good one. Let it go, Billy. Good fish. Still on? Go on, I'm gonna clear him. Clear your line? All right, now we hit. Way to go, Billy. 
think you got the metal in that one. Coming around, Billy. He may jump again here. He's trying to stay with the herd, and I'm trying to break him out. Got about five pounds of pressure on him. He still got fish with him, Billy. Got him. Whoop. He's still <laughs> with fish, isn't he? Huh? He was still with some fish. I don't think he was. I'm going to roll him back now. I'm pulling him back. I'm working on him now. I'm actually moving the fish back a little bit now. Not a real tough fish yet, but sometimes they wake up. Fish is going right. Coming into us a little bit. Right up on top of the water now. He's out about 50 feet right on top. Jump takes a lot out of him. Keep a different angle on him all the time. Almost every pull is a little bit different. Now I'm going for him down deep. I'm gonna pull him up. Now I'm gonna go deep on him. Doesn't like that. Back up, buddy. Well, he's smart. He's learned to stay deep. I can't hurt him as bad when he's deep. We'll pull him up now and then try to back him. See me turn him over? We're going to take part of this net down here. We'll get him on that starboard side if we can. OK. Screw the drag down a little more now and put about six, eight pounds on him. I think we got most of his jumps out. That's the only time he can really hurt us if he jumps. You can bring him in on this side, aren't you? Yeah, try to bring him in on this side. It's going to be five minutes before I get him in, though. He's not quite ready. Coming back. One more try. Come on, mister. I don't know whether he's going to open that mouth or not, Billy. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get him. All right, I'm going to leave him. This time, Billy. Lead him in here. See him slam that mouth closed? Yeah. Can you come underneath him? I got him. OK, we'll release him, give him a gentle release. Get our fly back for the next fish. You Watch that gaff, Lee. You got the fly, Billy? If he jumps, I'm going to get the fly. I got the gaff. OK. Going back. Need anything else okay, on this Okay, let's get him going and revive him, Lee. OK. Want me to run the electrics a little bit and pull him along? Go ahead. How's that? <laughs> Is he reviving a little bit? Yeah, he's starting to open and close his mouth now. OK. He's starting to flap his tail a little bit. He's ready. Ready to let him go? Here he goes. OK. OK, mister. Sure You're in good off. shape. They're too important to catch only one time. They're scarce, and there are not enough of them. So we release them to fight another day, unless he's a world record. Or Mr. 200. <laughs> Let's go get another one. All right, we got a school of fish directly ahead of us, two or 300 feet. I'm going to circle and see if I can get up wind to them. Are they chaining again, Billy, or breaking to the right? I think they're breaking right. Hold it. It's off. They're swinging around to the right. They're coming right to us, Billy. Right. Eat it, eat it. Good. Four. Better go on all four. Come He's on. moving. Coming around. He's going to jump again, I think. Go jump stuff. again. Pretty good. That's a wild one. I'm not going. I'm not going to do anything with him. But take line now for a minute. Is that him? Yeah. Stop it. Double back on us. Yeah. He's got a big belly in it. Still got him though. Might see him here in a second. No, he's on this side. Coming right onto the boat. Uh oh. Watch her, Lee. Watch her. Watch, watch oh. Poe. He's behind us. He clear everything? Yeah. Coming around. That is a wow, and he's reverse field four times now. I'm scared of screwing down. He's really, he's still really wow. Let's take No, we better go after him, Lee. Here we go. He's gone again. 
going a little bit deep now, but I've, those jumps hurt him. He's being pretty docile, but I think he's still got a jump left in him. Ready, Lee? In just a second. Ready? Quick time on this fish. I always had him about 10 minutes. You see how thick he is? You see that depth? That means he's got weight. Twice. You dare straighten out? Yeah. It's straightening right now, Billy. Get you out of the gear. Bigger than I first okay, thought when he, when he first jumped. Side him in here this time. Okay. We got the new gaff. Got him. Big devil. Had him over. Get that hook. What's that point? I got the... Okay, he looks yeah. like about 130, doesn't he, Lee? Yeah. Real deep and real wide. All right, we'll revive him. I'll, I'll electric along a little bit and we'll try to revive him here. He's in pretty good shape right now, Billy. Yeah, it's a big fish, Bill. He's a good fish, boy. In another year, he'll be a monster. Okay. I think he's gonna survive all right. He's I'd... ready right now, Billy, if I can get this gap out. Okay. okay. Got him? Yeah. He's okay. Here he goes. Nothing wrong with him. In well, good shape. Quick time, Billy. Quick About time. Ten minutes. <laughs> that other gaff just kept straightening right out on me. It's almost straight out now. The hook. That was a beautiful fish. He'd be trophy size next year. I sure hope I run into him again. Billy, one o'clock and 80 feet, big fish. I got him right here, right here, Lee. One's following it. He's got it, he's got it. It's a good one, Billy, it's a good fish. It's a good fish. Not as big as the first one, that first fish was really big. A big not fish. Not bad, not bad, though. A good fish. This one looks like 150 is better, doesn't he? If he stop, I want to hit him just a couple of times. Try to jab him good. <laughs> okay, let's go, Lee. I think he's got about 150, 200, Lee. Going straight away, straight okay, in. I'm, I'm wide open and pulling. Okay. Pulling hard. <laughs> Just let me know if we're gaining or losing. We're picking up a little line. Okay. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on him until we get close. He's still wild, though, you know. I don't want to screw him down too hard yet. Still got some jumps left in him. He's one of those greyhounders, and they always mean they put a big belly in there, and then greyhound away, they'll pop your line. Thank goodness he's going straight away. Can't move his head fast enough when he's in the water to hurt you, but momentarily he just increases his velocity because he doesn't have the resistance of the water against him and he can sail through the air really fast for the first few feet when he comes out. He slowed up considerably now, gaining a lot of line. We'll be on the fly line here in a minute where we can bear down on him. I think I can go to two now, Billy. Okay, let's go to two. Two electrics and save a little juice. This fish is joined up with another school. He's right in the middle of it. I'm afraid one of those fish is gonna break me off. See if I can break him back out again. Pretty nice school here for somebody. Okay, I got him broken off to the side now. Okay, I'll get your belt and glove for you. Well, I had him on 20 minutes now. He looks like he's gonna be tough, so I wanna get some equipment on where I can really fight him. My stomach's getting a little sore from that rod jamming into it. And the other thing I wanna do is get a glove on this hand because you can raise some blisters in about half hour fighting them here. So we've got a glove and we got a rod belt. Go back and take up a little line, man. We'll be in business. When they look like they're 150, they can also be 200. It all depends on their depth and their width, and that's difficult to tell until you get them really near the boat. So we're fighting this fish uh, with the possibility that he could be a world record of 200 pounder. 
I don't think so. We think it's about 150. That's the first impression from the jump, which is usually a good one. But we've got to get him up here close where we can get him on his side and look at his girth before we can tell. He is a long fish, and he's got some, he's got some depth to him, too. When you see a real big head on a fish, generally he's got some good depth and girth to him. So I'm backing that fish up now. You see how I'm backing him right up? And he doesn't like that. You see how he takes off and goes to the bottom. He's going to get smart in a minute and won't come to the top because I can really hurt him when he's on the top. I can put my rod down low and just flip him right over because he has no protection when you pull down below him. When you're pulling up top like this, he just puts his pectoral fins out and you can't budge him. But you get down low like that and you really put a hurting on him. Now you see I'm starting to back him. Now he's stopped. He's coming backwards now. That low blow really gets him. And you keep moving from side to side. That time I pull this direction. Now I'm going to pull him here, try to defeat him psychologically as well. Keep him off balance all the time. He's trying to roll. He did, and I backed him, see? When he rolls like that, he loses momentum just for an instant. And at that instant, when he's on the top of the water, you can back him up. He's rolling to get air into his air sac, which he breathes, as well as through his uh, gills. And if you make him give up that air, it fatigues him that much quicker. So right at the top of his roll, I really rear back on him and try to back him up. And usually you'll see some bubbles come up after that happens, and he's had to give up his air. And we'll try to pull his head high and then give him a low blow. But he's getting smart. He goes back low pretty quick. But I'm still under him. You see how I'm tipping him down? That really hurts him. He's pretty thick fish, Lee. Yes. Well, we've had him on just an hour now. We've hopefully got him just about ready to lip gaff. He's hooked in the right corner of the mouth. And I don't want to fight him from the right side because I'm chafing the leader when I fight him from the left like I'm doing now. So I'm trying to move him back around where I can keep the fight on his right-hand side. Quite a bit of pressure. Fish usually lets me lift his head pretty good. So I hope he'll do that when I get him up here to Lee. Going onto the boat again. When you see one headed for the boat, go right to the bow. Put your rod tip way down in the water and come around, or else you'll break your line or your rod on the side of the boat. That's very important. Get your line down in the water. You still let me lift him a little. A lot of fish won't do that. They'll put the nose right on the bottom, won't let you lift them. Try to back him up. He's backing well. Had him over on his tail that time. This stage of the game, you wonder who's playing with who. Am I playing with him or he's playing with me? He's just looking so easy down there and just barely flapping that big tail. But I can't really move. I can move him, but I can't move him continually. We've had him on an hour and a half even now. The important thing is he looks so easy now, and I can roll him around and control him, but I can't get him to the boat. And if I give it a little extra pressure and try to bring him right up for Lita Gaff, he'll pop that leader. It's a big temptation to horse him at this stage, but you gotta resist it and just keep the same pressure on it you've had the whole fight. Sooner or later, he'll roll over. The fish is really tired now. He could belly up any time. There you go. Wouldn't open his mouth. Get him next shot. <laughs> it might not be releasing this fish. Gaff enough, Lee. You want another him. one? Good fish. Oh, what you got? Oh, what you got? Oh, what you got? Big fish. Better put the tape on. Big football fish. Feels heavy, Billy. If the girth measurement indicates to your guide that the chances are strong for a new record, then you have to move fast. 
Every minute the fish is out of water, it's losing weight through dehydration. So wrap it in wet towels to cover it from the sun, and then get to an official scales as fast as you can. To qualify for a record, you'll need a photograph of the tarpon on the scales and one of your rod and reel. Send the photographs along with the fly, leader, and one inch of your fly line, all intact, to the International Game Fish Association with a filled out notarized application form. They'll determine if you've set a new record. Billy, 11 o'clock, big wad coming at us. Got him, Lee. Is that a mess of fish? Good Lord. Look at that cow there. Look at the size of it. Boy, oh, there's about five fish in there I'd like to have. Coming right around the boat. I'm just trying not to spook them too bad. Right here, Lee. They didn't turn off. We're in good shape. Might be in good shape here. Boy, big hog eight. They didn't get him. Yes, I did, too. Big fish, big fish, big fish. Oh, he's not doing anything. I don't want to run yet till I can hit him. That, boys, is a big fish. That is a big moo moo. Big moo moo. What a tank. Something wrong with him. He's not fighting. He'll probably wake up, but he's not fighting yet. He's 30 feet from me now. Watch him, because he may jump. Big fish. He may not be 200, but he's big. Well, I don't know about this fish. I've never had one that is this big who's so docile to start with. I mean, he made three real nice jumps, but he's not wild. He's just going really slow. And the last time he jumped, there was blood coming from his gills. When he hit the water, I could see blood coming back in the water. He may have ruptured some of his gills. If so, it might, you know, it could be a short fight. I hate to say that this early in the game. We're trying to gain some line back now. We've got the net down, the big gaff out, the lip gaff, gloves, belt, rope put his gills, the billy club. So we got all the stuff ready for taking him on board if we can do it quickly. What's he doing now? Well, he's just making a little short burst there, being pretty nice. You never know, they can always wake up, you know, they find out they're hooked. This one may not know he's hooked yet. Look at the size of that thing. I can't control him too much. I'm moving him back a little bit. But he's acting like a fish you've played for an hour or two. Instead of a brand new freshman, he might have just traveled in from South America last night, be a little bit tired. What a tank. I don't know whether he's what we want. He's got the length. I don't know if he's got the girth or not, but he's sure got the length. Damn it. Well. He garbaged it, took it down about 15 inches. See how rough it is? That's the breaks of the game, you know, with these big tarpon out here. Sometimes you're only allowed one foot of heavy leader. And if they really, these big fish, they'll come up and just take it right down. And that's what he did. And they can wear through this uh, 15 pound tippet and just about nothing flat. I think maybe that's one reason. He probably had it down in his gills. That's one reason we saw blood fly out. He had it so deep it was in his gills. But you don't hold them very long when they get it down over your tippet like that. That's the way you lose most of your big fish out here is they take it up about 15, 20 inches. It's hard to believe they can take it that deep, but they sure can. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, let's get another one.
You don't win them all. But every tarpon you lose brings you closer to the one you will land. Losing should only make you more determined. I guess I've had 15 200 pounders on and I lost every one of them. But you can be sure I'm gonna land one of those son of a guns one of these days and it could be this season. Billy, Billy, nine o'clock behind you. Big fish coming in. Okay. Nine o'clock, about 100 feet, coming right at us. Got him. Cow, Mike. If I can just hit him. That's the fish we're looking for, Billy. Got him, Mike. That's the fish we're looking for. God, it's a huge fish. That's the monster, boys. God, this is the one, Billy. What a monster. Look at the other monsters down there. Oh, let's take him, Billy. Oh, I'm shaking all over. Holy mackerel. God. Oh, my God. Yeah, he didn't throw me, did he? My heart's going nine million miles in a minute. Jesus, God, oh my. You got him? Yep, I got him. We got a real big fish on here. It's my fish. Ten years I've been looking for this fish. Well, he's just, he's still at a school. I'm trying to break him out, but I'm being pretty easy with him because there's a whole herd of fish down there. He's still at a school, isn't he? Yeah. There's the herd. I'm just afraid to tighten it up too tight when he's still in that school. Well, he stayed with the school for about three miles. We finally had to put the big engine down and chase him. And I got up close to him, got him on the fly line. I broke him out of the school with some low blows. So then we pulled the big engine back up again so we wouldn't mess it up for all these other guys. And we've got the electrics down now and we're working him on the electrics. But when he wants to go, he just goes. I don't near have him under control yet. I'm just trying to tie him down a little bit. But I'm a long way from having him under control. Double back on you, Billy. Yeah. Don't scare me like that. He's trying to keep me off just like I'm keeping him off. Coming across, coming across. This is an erratic fish, Billy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Goes right, goes left, goes right, goes left. Won't let us get closer than 30 feet on the fly line. I can't gain much on those rolls. He's learned to keep moving. He's not too tired. Comes up in rows and just a momentary pause, but I can't back him yet. Still got a lot of power. Whenever he wants to go, he just goes and you can't horse him. <laughs> you can't horse him at all. You can work on him. So he's running now. All I can do is just stand here and let him go. I mean, he's going. Nothing I can do to stop him. Can't even work on him when he's doing that. I'm just wasting energy if I'm pumping when he's running like that. And you know, when he makes a turn or he slows down, I go back to work on him. He really put on a burst of speed there. Well, I've got about five, six pounds on now. I just checked it when I had a little moment when he wasn't pulling tight against it and five, six pounds, that's all I want to risk on the reel. I've been putting a couple of pounds on with my fingers, but my, yeah, we're at an hour and a half now. My hands are starting to get a little tired and so I'm going to start letting the reel do most of the work now. Just take my hands off the line and try not to make a mistake. Is that a big fish? Is that a big fish? That's big. 
Big moo moo, look at that fat, would you? Big moo moo. Got the line around his tail, he's flapping it about that wide. We've been fishing, uh, chasing this fish two hours. Let's get on him, Lee. And we've chased him about seven miles, seven to eight miles. Got the first good look at him just now. We had him, what, two hours and something. He looks really long, looks seven feet long. That's uh, about the biggest back I think I ever had in front of me. Don't let you roll, you bastard. We had this fish on about eight hours and 15 minutes. We've gone over 25 to 30 miles tracking the fish, and we're getting pretty close now. Well, we've had him on his side once, and I back him up occasionally, but he still flaps his old big tail and goes. We just can't get quite close enough to the fish. Hit him on his side a little bit. I'll fight him as long as I can fight him. Near midnight that night, an exhausted Billy Pete would relate the story of a nine and one half hour battle that ended just after dark. He would tell how Lee sunk the gaff into the huge tarpon and the fish pulled the guide right out of the boat. But Lee hung onto the gaff and with help from another boat, finally landed the fish. Then there was a long run home in the dark. This is the fourth largest tarpon ever taken on a fly rod. It weighed 184 and three quarter pounds, just four pounds short of Billy's 188 pound record. Now what kind of an effort do you think it'll take to land a 200 pound tarpon with a fly rod? Record fish don't come easy. They take a lot of effort, teamwork, and luck. There's a great deal you have to know, so let's take a look at what we've covered in this tape. You learn the underlying principles that make giant tarpon so much more of a challenge than average tarpon. They're the ultimate fly rod game fish, and now you know why. You saw how the hunt for the giants here along the gulf differs from keys fishing and how to spot the biggest one in the school. I then showed you what you need to do to get your fly in front of the fish you want and how to adapt your retrieve to lure a giant to your fly. I built on the techniques from my first tape to demonstrate the methods I used to hook up and fight a fish that weighs more than I do. And I showed you everything you need to know to be able to land one using a fly rod and a 16 pound test tippet. Thank you for joining me in this video series. It took over three years of my life to complete. And although during that time the techniques have remained the same, some of the equipment has changed. This tarpon wear clothing is ideal for conditions on the flats. It's cooler, it protects you from sun and moisture, and it's roomy fit gives you the freedom of motion that you need for casting and for fighting a tarpon on the flats. I spent two years working with 3M scientific anglers on the development of the Ultra 2 tarpon taper fly line. I suggested to 3M that they coat some braided monofilament to create a line that would really shoot and as a bonus would reduce the possibility of tangles when the line was jumping off the deck with a running fish. The Ultra 2 Tarpon Taper is the greatest fly line ever made for tarpon fishing. You know it's the reel that really beats the tarpon. This is the latest version of my anti-reverse reel. 
Some anglers prefer an anti-reverse because it reduces the chances of breaking the fish off if he surges while you're cranking. Other anglers prefer a direct drive reel because they feel you can retrieve line faster. Direct drive reels also have an exposed rim on the spool for palming when you need to apply extra drag. If you prefer a direct drive reel, try System 3. Both reels have super smooth drags and I've caught a lot of tarpon on both of them. Having the right equipment increases your chances of landing a giant tarpon. It just better not be my 200 pounder. I hope you've enjoyed watching my series on fly riding for tarpon. In just two hours, I've shown you what it took me 24 years to learn. If you'll practice what you've learned from these programs and stick with it, you'll find that you've become a master tarpon fisherman and perhaps competition for me for the next world record. excitement you're after. Come fishing with the experts from 3M Scientific Anglers and learn ways to catch more and bigger trout on the fly. You'll learn where to find trout in a stream and ways to present the right fly with the perfect cast so you can catch the most elusive trout during hatch and non-hatch situations. Plus there's steelheading for 20 pound rainbows or going for the ultimate saltwater challenge. Let 3M Scientific Anglers bring home the excitement while you learn a lifetime of mastery techniques that will help you become the best fly fisherman you can be. There's no other sport like fly fishing. It can truly give you a lifetime of discovery and enjoyment. Whether you fish your own favorite stream, or travel the world with your fly rod, there's no end to what you'll learn. To help speed you along your path of discovery, Scientific Anglers from 3M has recruited some of the world's best fly fishermen to produce a complete learning system of videotape programs. Unlike simple how-to videos, the Scientific Anglers Mastery Series shows you more than just tips. It gives you an easy-to-learn formula for success to truly help you become a master angler. There are programs designed to give you a strong foundation of knowledge and skill. At the next level, the mastery system helps you integrate the skills and knowledge into sophisticated fly fishing strategies. And for the expert, there are challenge level programs that offer original and innovative techniques to help you master the most difficult fly fishing situation. Think of it as a learning path towards fly fishing mastery. The tape you just viewed is part of that path. 
In Doug Swisher's Trout Series, Scientific Anglers presents a four-part program that features a natural learning progression. First, there's basic fly casting, where you learn loop control and the principles of throwing a perfect straight line cast. Then you move on to advanced fly casting, building your skills with more complex casting techniques, including curve and reach casts. Now you're ready for action as Strategies for Selective Trout shows you how to fish a hatch from bottom to top. And you'll almost feel the strike as Doug demonstrates ways to take difficult trout in non-hatch conditions. Finally, in Advanced Strategies for Selective Trout, Doug teaches you his most sophisticated methods, including ways to successfully fish the midge, how to unlock the mysteries of masking hatches and special streamer tactics to catch big trout. You'll be part of the action as you look through the eyes of the expert and learn the real whys behind the mastery of fly fishing for trout. While you're improving your streamside skills, you may also want to learn to tie your own flies. Gary Borger shows you a step-by-step -step approach to the basics of fly tying. And Doug Swisher demonstrates how to tie flies to match the hatch and his deadly attractor patterns. If you're hooked on catching the big ones, you've got to see the four-part series on fly fishing for Pacific Steelhead. Lonnie Waller and Jim Teeny will provide you with a complete arsenal of skills so that you can take these giant rainbows, even in the most challenging conditions. But that's not all. Scientific Anglers takes you south to watch world record holder Billy Pate demonstrate his secrets of success for hooking up and landing the ultimate fly fishing game. And if you love fishing, hunting, and other sports, think of 3M as your total video resource for outdoor adventure. Explosive action, in-depth information, incredible scenes. 3M Sportsman's Video Collection brings you the world of bass fishing with America's top anglers like Doug Hannon, Ricky Klein, and Al Linder, a comprehensive learning series that'll make you the best bass angler on your lake. You'll be glad you watch these programs when you catch the bass of a lifetime. the gentle beauty of a deep forest glade, the heart-pounding excitement of a trophy buck in rut, going one-on-one -on -one with North America's most popular big game animal. That's what deer hunting's all about. And nobody brings you more in-depth information and true life action than the 3M Sportsman's Video Collection. The excitement of calling a bird into your gun. The satisfaction of making a clean shot. And the companionship of a well-trained dog. If you like the challenge of upland game bird and waterfowl hunting, 3M Sportsman's Video Collection gives you the thrill of being there. And the knowledge you need to master the sport. If you're serious about having fun on the slopes, then the video series Skiing with Style is just for you. 3M got together with Skiing Magazine and the Professional Ski Instructors of America to bring you a unique, proven training method that will help you learn more advanced techniques faster than you ever thought possible. You'll feel like you're skiing right along with the pros as you build your confidence and learn new skills that can make the entire mountain your playground. Be sure to see the Skiing with Style series from 3M you'll be looking good out on the slopes.